In this episode of Tesla series, we're upgrading the rear view mirror on a Tesla Model 3 with a much larger mirror from Handshow that has a backup camera integration. This streaming mirror allows you to adjust the camera angle and has an auto dimming feature with a built-in light sensor. This accessory is compatible with all Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys. While I show you the detailed installation and share my opinion about this product, I would really appreciate it if you could please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We have reviewed hundreds of Tesla accessories here and always provide you with step-by-step -step detailed installation guide and honest review. We have so many more Tesla accessories for Tesla Model 3s and Ys coming to the channel soon. All right, let's do a quick unboxing and some prep work and then we'll get on with the installation. So the box comes with all the hardware that you need for this installation, of course, including this is the mirror. Um, it has two leads right here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to connect in just a second. This is your extension. So this is going to reach all the way to the back of your car. This is the OBD connector. So we are going to connect this to the rear OBD plug. Uh, don't worry if you already have other products installed, you can still use this through the daisy chain method. Just make sure that if you have an older car and it uses a 20 pin connector, that it is a 20 pin connector like this. If you have a newer car, the blue pin is a 26 pin connector. So just clarify that when you order the system to make sure you get the right cable. Here is another cable that we're going to need to connect and I'll show you here in a later step. Here is the camera itself. So we're going to be routing this to the behind the trunk and then we're going to be using this 3M to install it. And then there is this bracket that we need to install right here. Uh, which we are going to do some prep work here before we go to the car and then this is the hardware for that bracket. So we actually need to insert this bracket through here and for shipping purposes I think they put this separately and they send you this screws that you can use to fix it. But the issue is these wires need to pass through this bracket and no problem for this one, the power one, but this data one, it doesn't fit through this hole. We have to remove this green connector and then just pass this internal wire and then install this after we have passed that wire. And to do that, you have to undo this yellow clip right here. Just take a hook, something like this, and then pry this yellow thing out. So this is when it just pops out. And the next step, you're going to pry this little tab out. So just pry this up and then you will be able to just remove this internal mechanism because that tab that is forcing that thing down is what is securing that whole connector. So if you were to figure out a way to pry this up, again, take a hook. You might have to try it a couple of times to get underneath this tab right here. You are able to just remove this. Now, after you have removed this blue bracket, what you need to do is insert this main, this is the power cable through this main hole here and then you want to pass it through this little hole here so you need to make that connection um, but you can also for easier access you can also leave it out like this for now and we are going to be passing this other cable through this hole but for now what you need to make sure is you got this light sensor here there are three buttons here and make sure that this thing is facing up so opposite end of this light sensor so you need to install it like this. You can actually go ahead and put the screws that came with the kit into this four hole. So that's what we're gonna do here today. And then we are going to be routing this cable through that hole. After you pass the cable through here, you can go ahead and put this blue connector with this yellow lock clip. So to do that, again, just insert this through here in here so that that can make that connection then you can grab this yellow lock clip and just put it where you took it out from so that it can become secure again. I'm installing this product for a subscriber and he had previously removed his mirror clip cover from here. But this is how you remove that clip by just using a pry tool and remove a tie that is connected to that clip. Next, unhook the mirror clip electrical clip that is also for auto dimming. To remove it, you just have to push down and while holding that middle tab, you pull the plug out. Grab a microfiber towel and use a wrench or a pair of pliers to turn the mirror housing counterclockwise. Once you turn it a little bit and loosen this part, you can then just use your hands to turn it further and completely remove the mirror. 
To make this installation a little easier, let's remove this top bracket by simply prying it out. Please be really, really gentle with this process to not break anything. Work around the headliner to pull the inner part out. You don't have to remove the camera wire as the goal of removing the bracket is just to route the wire through the headliner. This next step requires transferring this metal spring piece into the new mirror. Mine is a Torx 10 long screw. Once you remove that screw, this metal piece comes out really easily. On the new mirror, go ahead and use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove this middle screw. Put the metal spring piece that we removed from the Tesla mirror and insert it in this exact same position. There's a very specific way this goes in, so make sure it is fully seated and flushed before tightening the middle screw. Fish the middle wires through this top bracket hole and tuck them into the headliner for wire routing. Next, the goal is to align this new mirror bracket to the Tesla mirror housing with that triangular piece. Once you have that aligned, push it in and then turn it clockwise to secure it. Remember this is how we remove the Tesla mirror by turning it counterclockwise. Now go ahead and turn it clockwise so that you can secure this mirror. Make sure the mirror is fully secured before you let it go. Go ahead and put the top bracket on. This step requires some patience. If any of the metal clips have fallen down, you just need to insert them into the top bracket prior to securing the assembly. Next, grab the two long cables that came with your kit and we're going to make those connections. This blue plug is for the camera connection and the gray plug is for your power. The blue connects to the green plug and you just have to push it in to secure it. The gray plug requires matching arrows on both sides and it's also a very simple push to secure. Go ahead and hide this cable through the top headliner and route them towards the door. Remove the side door panel by using a pry tool. At this point, you have to separate the routing path for this two cable. The one with the black plug with red and black wiring needs to be routed down towards the passenger footwell. The other blue plug needs to be routed to the back of the car through the top headliner. Pry open this side panel a little bit and you can route this black plug towards the footwell. I believe we have an airbag here, so please be very gentle. I would actually recommend tugging this cable through the weather stripping to route it down instead of even prying this side panel. Once you reach the bottom, grab the new OBD harness that came with the kit and connect the two black adapters together. We're then going to route this OBD adapter harness through the foot well, through the side central console area, all the way to the back OBD part behind the central console. You can also route this cable through the bottom door sill panel and pass it through this opening in the carpet. For the long camera cable, you can simply pass it through the headliners along the car. You may need to use a pry tool, but there's plenty of space to route the small cable like this. Follow this exact same step until you reach the back seat. Then you can remove the side seat panel by simply pulling it out. We can then route the camera cable to the very back. You might need to use a fishing wire for this, but you can also remove enough clips on the carpet to easily route this to the back. Now that we have fished this wire to the trunk, we need to route it all the way to the top trunk panel through this tight grommet. Given the size of this plug, it will be very, very difficult to route it. So we need to remove this plug. Take a small hook like this and pry this yellow piece out. Then you need to pry this middle piece and hold it up so you can slide the metal connector out. Then this whole process becomes much easier to route. Now remove the top and bottom grommet. In Model Y, you can simply fish this cable through the very short grommet in the top. This process is much harder for Model 3. In Model 3, you need to first pass this fishing cable. Then use an electrical tape to secure the plug to the fishing cable. Finally, pull the fishing cable out and you would have routed the cable to our site. To make this routing process easier, now we're going to remove the zip ties. Insert a very small flathead screwdriver through this opening slit on the zip ties securing the grommet. You can then remove the zip ties completely to allow the grommet to become loose. Do this on both the top and the bottom zip ties. Then insert a fishing wire from the top and allow it to reach the bottom grommet. You may use some WD-40 to make this process easier. Put an electrical tape on the camera plug and secure it using the fishing wire. You can then pull the fishing wire from the top. Again, this is a tedious process, so you have to be really, really careful to not pull on any of the Tesla wires. 
After routing that wire, remove this top tailgate cover by pulling on it. There are several clips holding this bracket, so take your time, but you will need to apply some firm pressure to remove this cover. Next, reach the area from the inside tailgate and locate your license plate lights and the rear camera. You can remove those connectors if you want an easier access, but this is an optional step. You can leave those connectors intact and still be able to fish the camera cable. You have to pinch on those two metal connectors to be able to remove this entire housing. You can use a plier to pinch on the metal spring and push it out to remove it. I found it easier to remove the license plate for this step. As you can see, you can remove the entire camera assembly, but you can also leave those plugs intact. Pass the wire we routed from the bottom through this opening, and we need to reinstall the blue plug we disassembled earlier. You can simply slide the metal piece into the blue housing, and you can insert the yellow piece. This yellow piece has a little notch, and if you face that towards the tip of the clip, it goes in easily. Next, go ahead and make the camera connection. You can simply push on the clip and you'll hear a click when they secure. Grab the Tesla camera housing we removed earlier and insert just the right amount of camera cable through this opening. Push the camera housing bracket to secure it. You have several options on where this camera goes, but we're going to place it right here on the side of this trunk release bracket. Grab some alcohol wipes and thoroughly clean this area. Remove the 3M sticker and stick the camera into this location. Hold it down for several seconds until it is fully secured. In the inside, make sure to connect all the plugs you removed earlier and ensure the metal clips are fully inserted to secure the rear camera housing. One last step is to connect the OBD plug. Reach the very bottom part of the rear console and pull the bottom bracket out. Pinch on the middle part of the OBD plug and while holding it down, pull the plug out. If you have a newer Tesla, this plug will be blue for you and larger in size. Plug the new male connector into the female Tesla connector and the male Tesla connector into the new female connector. You can hide this new plug in that bottom space. That is it. The installation is now complete. If for some reason your backup camera is not turning on after this install, go to service menu and hit clear camera calibration. The bottom one is the light sensor for auto dimming properties and that top left button is to turn off the camera feed and just use this as a regular mirror. There are two buttons on the right side. The top button allows you to lift the camera angle up so you can see things towards the top and bottom button allows you to see things towards the floor. This is a 1080p resolution and honestly has more colors and looks SD compared to the Tesla's backup camera. First of all, I really like that this rear view camera is much larger and provides a higher field of view compared to the Tesla OEM mirror. I always thought that the rear view mirror was a bit too small on a Tesla Model 3 and Y. This helps you reduce blind spot while driving. Even just for that, this is a big upgrade. I like that this has anti-dimming features and even though there is glares from rear car lights at night, this is not much different than the Tesla's camera glare. If the glare is too much, you can just turn off the feed and use it as a regular mirror during the nighttime. I like being able to adjust the camera angle. This mirror allows you to set your angle to your liking. I think the video quality is okay at 1080p. I know some rear view camera mirrors we have purchased from Amazon can now go to 4K, but 1080p looks decent in this case. A couple of feedback for Hanjo. I think it would be better if the camera itself looked somewhat close to the original Tesla's camera and not as big. Right now you can tell this is an add-on camera. I already asked them if they can just tap into the rear camera from Tesla and they told me it causes issues and Tesla software update might break it in the future. So they have to use a separate camera for this application. I think they should send those connectors uninstall and have the user install them after passing through those tight space. This would speed up the installation process. Overall, I think this is a great upgrade and might be useful for many people. If you think your Tesla's mirrors are small and you would like a bigger mirror that also have a rear view camera, this is an amazing product. Like all the modifications we do in this channel, this of course is not for everyone. As always, I'm really interested in knowing your feedback, so please do me a favor and share your thoughts about this product in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It also greatly helps us if you share our video links and post them in online forums where others might want to see these products. Thank you for watching. 
please come back next week for another Tesla accessory review.